My story is about my grandmother and I. Um, last time I saw my grandma, she was about, she was 97 years old. And she was a courageous woman, no stranger to chaos and challenge. And her mother died in childbirth when she was two years old, delivering her younger sister and left her father with um, four young children. And so at two, my grandmother became the mother, the, the maternal figure of the house. And, um, and the family did okay. They proceeded uh, to grow up well. And then my grandma got married to my grandfather biologically, but I never knew him because he died when my grandma was 30 and left a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a five-year-old. And my grandma didn't have much in the way of skills. You know, she had essential education, but no real job or anything. She had home taking care of the kids. Unfortunately, she found a job at a Catholic church where she could be the housekeeper and have room and board, and the kids could go to the school, and she could be right there with them all the time. And, and it worked well, and they, they worked hard. They grew up. And, and Grandma, as a housekeeper, met um, a man who came to the church selling vacuum cleaners, uh, kind of a door-to-door -door vacuum cleaner salesman. The priest told him to go talk to this lady. She's the housekeeper. And she didn't buy a vacuum cleaner, but she ended up marrying the man that I came to know and love as my grandfather a real saint of a man, and he came from kind of meager background as well. But between them, they worked hard. They built this, they went from selling the vacuum cleaners to selling real estate to my grandfather, or both of them started a real estate brokerage. And then um, he, my grandfather became the president of the Board of Realtors in our town, which is a good sized town in Illinois, just outside of Chicago. And uh, things were going really well for them until the interest rates got really high and everybody quit buying houses and they went bankrupt. And at about 60 plus years old, they started all over again, not from scratch, but in a hole. And, uh, but you would never know it looking at grandma. You know, she, um, she was just awesome, courageous and chaos could never get her down or the people around her because she was a massive encourager. And I knew that from an early age because she and my mom job shared, basically supporting my grandfather growing up. I would be taken over to my grandma's house and left with her in the mornings, which was wonderful. Because I'd get there about 7.30, and the first thing I'd do is share breakfast with grandma as we're getting ready to have a day. And at 8 o'clock, we would start the Jack LaLanne exercise program. <laughs> and so I would do my toe touches and my bends and twists right alongside grandma. And I was like three or four years old, but I still remember that, and I'm way old now. And um, uh, we'd do everything except Grandma didn't do any of the muscle building exercises because she didn't want muscles, but I did. And so I would do the push-ups and we had some toy weights and at three or four years old I was doing those and I'd show Grandma my muscles when I was done and she would ooh and ah at me and basically tells, always tell me, Randy, you are a good boy. And then after the, after the exercise program we'd start the housework and I would dust all the low stuff that I could reach and uh, when I got done with that or holding this dustpan for her, she would always be impressed with my work and was always, Randy, you are a good boy. And I just loved it. I, mean, I, I felt when I got done with Grandma that my halo was shining and my biceps were bulging and <laughs> Grandma was the queen of the world and I was her little prince. Uh, and that's how it was my whole life with Grandma. She, um, as I went to school, I would save my papers to show her when they had stars on them or if I, my report cards, the good ones anyway, to show grandma and um, if I got dressed up later in high school to go out on a date or whatever, I always stopped by grandma's house first and she would always encourage me one way or another and, um, and that went on. So um, later in life though, I ended up moving out here to the East Coast and grandma, when she in her 90s, was back in Chicago and my grandpa, the, the dear old grandfather that we all loved, died and left her alone and she got old and weak and met both physically and mentally and had to start taking medications and the medications didn't agree with uh, the dementia that was going on and unfortunately the very last time I saw my grandma was the first time in my life that she didn't know who I was. I walked in with my brother and uh, a cousin and we sat around this little table in this nursing facility that she had to be in because of the medication and you could see her looking at my brother and me and my cousin. And she looked at my brother first and she said, are you my man? And we knew she looked that she was hoping that was her husband. 
And, but because she was, she was lost, she was fearful, she didn't know who she was or who she should be with. And my brother looked and said, no, Grandma, I'm, I'm Rick, I'm your grandson. I came up from Florida to see you. And Grandma couldn't connect. It was just, she was very disappointed looking, and, and Rick couldn't connect with her. And then she just turned to the same thing in me, but she looked even more hopeful for me, and maybe part of the reason is I told I looked like my original grand, my biological grandfather. And she looked at me really closely and she said, are you my man? And I looked at her and, and I saw how disappointed she was with my brother and I just, I reached across the table and I grabbed her hands and I said, Grandma, I'll always be your man. And she just looked at me and she, she um, all of a sudden started to smile a little bit and then big and, and then it was like old times. She smiled really big, her eyes focused and... She looked at me, 60 years old, six foot four, 200 and too many pounds, and she said, Randy, you're a good boy. <laughs> and, I was, and it was like the greatest gift I ever had. I mean, I never saw Grandma again after that, but that gift that she left me with was like, that came out of the chaos of her mind was the best thing I could have hoped for, and that's how I always remember her now. Thank you.